What's up guys and it's finally finally here it's time to do a speed test comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus versus the iPhone 11 Pro Max. These two phones are the absolute premium flagship phones from both companies having the most craziest specs so it's going to be a real fun checking out the speeds of both of these two beasts. Now before I start this video, a huge giveaway announcement for you guys, a Galaxy S20 and S20 Ultra giveaway is now live. Check out the link in the description. So I have the Galaxy S20 Plus. It's got the same specs as the Ultra model, uh, 12 gigs of RAM along with the Exynos 990 chip. Now I unfortunately live in Asian region, so I've got the Exynos model, but depending on where you live, you might get the Snapdragon version. So in the future, I will be doing testing on that as well. But right now we have the Exynos 990 Beast up against the Apple A13 Monster from Apple. Now as always, I'm gonna kick things off by booting up both phones at the same time and see which one loads up their respective software faster. The iPhone is running on the latest version of the iOS. I don't even remember what the version is, but it is the latest version. The Galaxy S20 on the other hand comes with Android 10 based on One UI 2.1. All right, booting up both of these two phones at the same time, here we go. And okay, Galaxy S20 Plus logo comes up first. Now, usually Samsung devices are quicker than uh, Apple flagship phones when it comes to booting up. And this might be the same case this time around. We just have to wait and see. Okay, so the Galaxy S20 Plus is quicker. You know, it is keeping the tradition of beating Apple when it comes to booting up every year. And iPhone is still taking some time. We can unlock, we can move around, we can have some fun, we can take a selfie. All right, this one is on. Anyways, let's get down to the business and open some applications. So everything is closed up in the background on both phones, as you can see. We're gonna start off slow, as always, with a bit of warm up, starting with phone dialer on both phones. You can see that was about the same. Really smooth animations as well. You can see how both have this gesture navigation system implementation. Thanks to the 120s display, the gesture navigation is as good as Apple's, which is pretty crazy because this just happened in just a year uh, with Samsung bringing this update through Android 10. Absolutely incredible. Moving forward, we have settings. Again, that is about the same on both phones. Moving out, we're gonna be taking a look at the third-party applications now, starting with Subway Surfers. We obviously do check this out all the time. And as you can see, the Galaxy S12 Plus done, uh, I mean S20 Plus done, whereas the iPhone took a little bit of time there. Just gonna leave this here. And we're just gonna go into another application that is going to be YouTube. And that is, I think that is slightly faster on the Galaxy S20 Plus. Obviously, this is a bit of a different feed on both phones. If we scroll around, you can see really smooth, no issue whatsoever. Next up, we have Cora. And that's faster on the Galaxy S20 Plus. Once again, same result. Spotify. That's about the same. Next up, we have Call of Duty. This big game is one of my favorite games to play on smartphone these days. And uh, let's see which one is going to be faster here. Uh, so far, Samsung has taken the lead with the games. Obviously, we just did the fresh reboot as well. Gonna be very interesting. So the S10, I mean the S20 Plus. Why do I keep messing this up? The S20 Plus is done, followed by the iPhone. Reddit. And that is faster on the Galaxy S20 Plus. Once again, scrolling looks really smooth on both phones, but this 120 years display is extra smooth. Next level stuff. Moving on to Instagram. And that is a slightly faster on the Galaxy S20 Plus with the latest feed. We're just gonna go ahead and scroll a little bit. Once again, a really smooth performance, but look at how buttery you know, S20 Plus is you just cannot see it through camera but yeah i mean both phones are really smooth this one is 120 hertz just a hardware difference uh, that is on par loading of the profile let's take a quick look at the insta cameras and that felt a little bit quicker on the iphone 
it's actually really, really close. It might actually be a draw, I think. Yeah, it is a draw. Both ones are taking this at the same time, opening the camera. Next, we've got SoundCloud on both phones. Uh, that is, I think that was a little bit quicker on the S20 Plus. Again, you guys are the judge here. Twitter. Uh, once again, S20 Plus. Wow. So that was a really fast opening of the feed. A bit of different feed, but the S20 Plus again taking the lead. Next, we have another game called as Pinout. That's again slightly quicker on the Galaxy S20 Plus. Checking out Facebook on both phones. Um, different feed, but feels like it was loaded a bit quicker on the S20 Plus as always. We're just gonna leave this here. Time for some 8K image rendering starting with Photoshop Express. And that was super duper quick on the iPhone with the loading of the gallery. We're gonna set the sharpness all the way to 150 on both phones. Here we go. Same thing with clarity. And finally, we're gonna add some raindrop effects. And now it's time to export this image in 8K with 100% quality going at the same time. Boom. And that is super damn quick on the iPhone. iPhone is the fastest phone when it comes to the image rendering and you know video editing and this kind of stuff. This is where Apple chipsets are really, really good. Now it's time for the browsing war. We've got Netflix.com, the first website on both phones. As you can see, that is faster on the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus. Scrolling looks really, really smooth on both of these two phones. Next on the list is wikipedia.org and that is once again really, really quick on the S20 Plus. No chance for the iPhone. I have to say really top performance and it's gonna get even better with the software updates, obviously. I mean, Samsung, it took them years to come on the level with iOS, I mean, especially with their TouchWiz days, but they are here. They are definitely here. As you can see, the performance is really good. Now I'm just gonna jump into the RAM management and see uh, which phone is better? Obviously, 4 gb of RAM here versus 12 gigs of RAM on this beast. I mean, it's already in the favor of Samsung, but uh, we're, we're just going to see if the 4 gb of RAM can actually do something here or not. Settings still there on both phones, although there was a bit of a black thingy on the iPhone. Could be a refresh. Um, oops. Yeah, both phones are keeping this in the memory. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Going to YouTube, that is still there as well. Quora, still there. Spotify, um, I think that was a refresh on the Galaxy S20 Plus, but then it loaded the application really quick. It might just be the app thingy. Let's see, this is still there. Call of Duty is still there. And that is also there on the iPhone. I think this is just a network refresh thingy. Reddit, still there. Instagram, SoundCloud. And finally, we're gonna go to Twitter. Pinout. I'm really surprised that Apple has really kept things in the memory. I mean, it's just 4 gb of RAM. Uh, this is just the app, in-app feed refresh. We're back to the Adobe Photoshop editor. And finally, we are back to the browser. So really good performance overall on both phones. I'm really surprised with the iPhone performance. Apple is definitely bringing some good gains with the updates. So yeah guys, incredible performance on both phones as always. Thanks to the new 120Hz display, Samsung has brought some amazing improvement to its gesture-based navigation system. It's just as good what we have on iOS for, for a long time. Honestly guys, Samsung's software game has improved so much. The design is incredible and in overall speed-wise, I am definitely Definitely surprised by the RAM management of the iPhone. Uh, Samsung did better in most of the app launch times. It was snappier. Did have slight edge in number of applications with a little bit of differences, not by huge. But overall, I'm really happy with the performance of the Galaxy S20 Plus. Uh, once again, it's the same processor, same things you're gonna see on other Galaxy S20 family phones as well, like the S20 Ultra and the normal S20. Uh, I will be doing a camera test soon, so make sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, don't forget to enter my giveaway for the S20 and S20 Ultra. Everything is in the description, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.